Okay, uh, so before starting the demo, uh, so what are the things we need as a kind of prerequisites? So one is we need a standalone mango stands as a source, which can be installed on your on your local machine or on your uh, other cloud branches. And then we need a user which can read all the databases of the source database. And then we need we need the oplog needs to be enabled. So oplogs are like a file or kind of directory or a file which is keeping all the transactions going on on your on your Mongo databases. So you can think it of as a binary logs in the MySQL. Then we have a uh, then for the incremental migration, we need to create the source database as the replica so that incremental migration can be um, can be make available. And then we need uh, we need to whitelist the IPs of the data of the DTS in the source database so that uh, DTS can take data from the source one and can send to the destination database. And then uh, instance on Apsa MongoDB as destination. So we need to create uh, one MongoDB instance on the Apsa DB cloud so that we do have the destination database as well. Uh, so let's start the actual demo part. Um, uh, if you see, I have already keep uh, two tabs open. One is for the DTS and one is for the MongoDB. Uh, so just to save the time, I have already created one Mongo instance with me. Uh, which is in the India region. So you can select the region where you want to create your Mongo instance. And But if you want to create it, uh, you can create it from this page. So generally, Mongo comes in two parts. As I have mentioned, that is one is replica sets and one is sharded clusters. So you can decide your region and then the respective version. And accordingly, you can decide the specification of your MongoDB. That's how it is. But just to save the time, I have already um, created one Mongo instance and we have already uh, one database source that is one Mongo source so okay so I will keep the left tab as a, as a source and I will keep the right tab as my destination so let's try to enter in my um, source database So you can see I have this source database. Let's try to see if I have any kind of uh, collections and documents created. So apart from the systems, I have created one demo migration. So you can see here. Uh, so I will not be creating one because it will because this is for the migration part. And then if we see the collections, if you can see here, it's pp dot demo call dot find. So you can see all the documents in this respective collection. Now coming on to the destination part. Uh, so before uh, trying to enter in this one, I want to show you something. Uh, that this is my Mongo instance, with which I have created. And while creating, I have created a username, which has the privileged permissions, but uh, not all as we used to have in the uh, self-managed one. Um, but also we need to whitelist the, uh, whitelist our IPs where, from where we want to connect our MongoDB. Apart from this, um, whenever you are accessing your Mongo instance from the outside world, you need a public IP connection. So as you know that MongoDB uh, works in a three nodes replica or a five nodes or a seven nodes or whatever you have designed. So I will try to log into the primary node using this public IP because I'm accessing from the outside world, not from the within VPC. But if your source database is in the same VPC as your database, then you can use the internet connections. But I'm using the public IP connection here. So let's keep it here. Uh, so yes, uh, for this part, as um, before we go further, I'm trying to migrate a standalone Mongo to the uh, Apsaram Mongo. So I'm not going to uh, migrate the sharded part or the replication part so the standalone to the replication or to the replica cluster so this is the string which i need to use to log in into the cloud or the Apsara mongodb instance so if you see here uh this is the same um which i have used here so let's try to log in in this one and let's try to enter the password okay so um let's see i don't have anything let me so i really don't have any collection as of now let's try to create a dts instance 
okay this one um, this is the DTS and now you need to create an instance where your region is or where your RDS or database is in so create a migration task so let's give it a name task name demo migration so we have different types of DTS as the source databases so if your database is a sites on your local machine or on some public IP address you have to use this one but if you are using the databases which are in the same RDS or in the Upsala DB RDS you can use this one and also if you are using um, some self-built through the CEN then you can use this so there are number of um, source type which you can use here because I will be moving my database from the uh, from the public IP so I will be using this option my instance is in India so I will use this one and then the database type I have so this is my uh, IP address of my source database this will remain default of the MongoDB database name in is admin so you need a database name via which you can enter it and then my database which can read all the data all the collections okay let me put the database and test the connectivity so this has been passed uh, but yes if you are migrating from the mongodb atlas and you want to make it uh, encrypted while migrating you can use the ssl encryption mode now the destination part is the mongo instance again is in india and because uh, it is the self-housed managed databases it will appear here so this will be created a database name admin again and then i will use database account name as the one which i have created and then i enter the password and it will go that's connectivity okay this has been passed we need to go further set whitelist so that the destination database can contain the whitelisting ips of the dtss next part now we need to decide what type of migration as I have mentioned before in my slides whether we want full or incremental data migration so I'll go for both one so we need to decide which database you want to move and then you can also do the migration as per the collection level so I have one collection at, at the moment so but I will move the entire database let's move it and then let's give it the different name just to be uh, make clear the mic source one from source okay now this is the time which you want that okay that until this time the source and the destination will be uh, connected now the thing is here uh, you want the incremental data migration so for the incremental data migration as I have mentioned in my slide that you need to make the source database as the replica for incremental migration now for this let's uh, try to create the your source database as the replica part so before that we need to uh, shut down our server db dot shut down server this will close our database now uh, the database has been uh, shut shut down server should be shut down now just to verify it i will again try to log in and it will not log in okay now i will try to make it as a replica how will i do that mongod minus the port which one i uh, i'm running on then i will put my db path so you have to change your db path as per your environment then i will use um, my one var lib mine mongodb and then i will put the log path where the log file resides where all, all the uh, like whatever happening in your database will be deciding here so this is in var so I'm using that default one, which get installed by, which is uh, by the installed libraries. So this one, and then the MongoDB log. And now I want to make it a replica set. So I will use this parameter REPL uh, set. And then I will give it a name RS0. And then I will bind the IP. So I will bind the IP 00, zero just for uh, this demo, but it is recommended that you should bind the IP as per your need. And I will make sure that only the uh, authentic uh, users can log in and then I will learn it as a background so let's try to run it okay child process started successfully parent exiting okay now uh, let's try to enter in this one 
Ähm, okay, now you can see that your database, uh, those database has been created as a primary database here. Uh, now let's try to, to create the migration part and let's see how full and incremental will work. Okay, uh, let's go pre-check. Okay, so if there is any error, it will automatically come up comes up here. So sometimes if your op logs has not been enabled, this will get fail. So you have to enable your op logs. And then uh, if your source database has some permission problems, then you have to deal with it accordingly. Then next. And now this is the important point. So the first thing is the full database migration is free. You don't need to uh, pay for this one. But if you are going for the incremental part, which is a kind of synchronization, then it is paid. But it is paid as per the channel specification. So by channel specification, I mean is that the number of records per second you want to migrate to your destination database. So the more, so the larger is your channel specification, the data will be more uh, faster transfer. So I will be using 2x large for this demo, and then I will uh, choose buy and start this one. And let's wait till the time the migration, the full database migration has been happened. Uh, let's see uh, what are in the details. So by quick diagnostic, you can check. Uh, if there is some kind of problems in your DTS, you can click on this one and then DTS will itself help you to realize what the, like what are the kind of errors you can or you are facing and you are doing something wrong. Then the details. So you can see uh, full data migrations. Um, it's, it is yet to be started, so it is running. So there is nothing as of now. So configure task. So you can see there's an instance ID for migration for every. Um, instance which you create as an instance ID which get automatically generated that's not in your hand to change it then we have task name which I have given in the starting phase then the migration types full data migration plus incremental data migration and then the rest of the details and then also if you want to monitor how your migration has been going on you can check it from this side like what is the bandwidth what is the source target uh, RPS the one which I have mentioned and the rest of the things. You can even filter out the times like what was the RPS before and now or on your uh, specified time windows. And then you can do it same for the incremental migration. So you can see here in the incremental migration, we have a source, we have a target, and then we have a DTS reader module which caches the data. And then DTS writer module which writes into the target part. So if you want to further diagnose it, then you can check in the logs. So as of now, it is not running because uh, it is under the uh, migration. Let's check what is the current process. Let's try to refresh it. Okay, so you can see out of, uh, let's see how many rows we have previously. So this is my source one. Um, let's try to enter in my database. Okay, now you can see here, so collection, show collections, and then db.demo call dot find. It's just like select star from, from here. So we have around seven documents in this collection, and this is what our data says. Let's verify if we have all the data is in our destination database. So first check if we have the database. Yes, we have the database, which we have renamed. Now let's try to copy it and paste it. Show collections. Okay, we have the collection here and then we will put it here and then find to verify if we have everything. Okay, so we have everything here. Now let's try to insert some more um, documents here. So our name was db dot uh, demo underscore call dot insert and then I will use this one so for okay so now here I will just enter the checking part check migrating check if migrating and check if incremental migrating 
just to keep it as uh, unique or just to um, keep it simple. And I think we are good to go. Okay, so this has been inserted. Let's check whether it has been inserted successfully. Okay, so this is in the source. Let's check it in the destination. So you can see we have the final document here. Let's check uh, what our console says. So you can see that um, in this one, we have all the uh, database, which is like the full, you can, you can check from here. And then from the performance monitoring, you can also check what was the uh, topology and something like this. So that's how the simple migration you can do uh, from your Mongo to the Apsara MongoDB. And it's quite easy. So, but one thing uh, you need to uh, disable, once it is done, you need to disable your replica once it is done. Uh, yeah, I hope you have uh, got some insights like how you can move from the uh, Mongo to the Apsara MongoDB. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach us and we will be more than happy to help you out. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks for joining.